Good morning. Give everyone just a minute or two to get in here. I've been ditching the morning coffee. Well, not quite ditching. I've been having coffee, but not every day. And it's actually much less than I used to. I've been ditching the morning coffee for, we make shakes now, um, which obviously it doesn't have caffeine, but um, it's very good. I like it a lot. I'm a huge strawberry person. I love strawberries, so a lot of times my shakes have strawberries in them. Good morning, Eleanor. Morning, Bob. Hey, everyone. How you guys doing? I'm glad you guys are coming in here this morning. We'll give everyone just another minute or so before we get started. The usual. We've been having uh, pretty nice weather lately, although I, maybe I spoke too soon. It's gray, gray sky out right now. <laughs> Uh, I actually don't know if the weather's supposed to be bad or not today. I'm assuming it's going to be warm because it has been warm. Morning, Judy. Morning, Tracy. Morning, guys. Come on in. Rusty, how you doing? Morning, Marilyn. Morning, Sandy. Come on in, guys. We'll get started in 30-second countdown. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. It's good to be here. I love doing this with you guys. Morning, Jan. Ah. As per usual, um, I'm going to pray just a quick prayer before we get started. Um, just going to invite the Holy Spirit to speak to us this morning um, in whatever you're doing. So, even in just a quick prayer, if you could just hold your hands out in a posture of receiving. Um, and we'll pray together to start. So Holy Spirit, come. Lord, I pray that your presence would be thick um, in each of our homes this morning as we, as we meet, as we talk, and as we read your word, Lord. I pray that we would be changed each time that we encounter your word. And Jesus, I pray that, that we would make space for you in our homes, even just this morning. Not just making space in our hearts, but make space in our homes for you, for, for conversations and for, for love. And Jesus, I pray this morning as we read and as we spend time together, that you would be the center you would be the center of our, our talk. You would be the center of our worship. That you would be the center of it all, Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, good morning, if you're just joining in. I'm going to be reading. I'm going to be reading right off the bat here uh, from Luke 19. Uh, a lot of you guys probably know this story. Um, the story of Zacchaeus the tax collector. We're reading right through um, from Luke 19, 1 through 10, just the very beginning there. I'm just going to read it, and then I'm going to talk about it a little bit. So Zacchaeus, the tax collector. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was very wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but because he was so short, he could not see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree just to see him, just to see Jesus walking his way. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this and began to mutter, has he gone to the guest of a, to be the guest of a sinner? Has he gone to that man's house? But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, look, Lord, here and now I give half my possessions to the poor, and if I cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man, too, is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. 
Now, you've probably heard that verse before. I can't remember. Um, there's a song that you learn in kids' church about Zacchaeus climbing the sycamore tree, the sycamore fig tree. I cannot remember it for the life of me, but maybe some of you know what, what I'm talking about. I was going to sing it this morning. It, it's like a cute little jingle um, to remember the story, but I cannot remember it for the life of me. But if any of you can, sing it for me because I can't remember it. Um, but wow, um, even if you have read this story, and then, and, and I should preface with right after this, it just moves on, right? Like Zacchaeus, it, it moves on to the next thing uh, in scripture. And so that's the story right there. And, and it's so short, but it's so powerful. Morning, Sue. Uh, it's so powerful. And I just thought like, wow, we can we can be more like Zacchaeus, right? Like, I think I read that and I think I could be more like Zacchaeus, right? I want to be more like Zacchaeus. There you go. You guys are singing it. <laughs> I love it. I'm not going to try and guess the tune of it, but I'm glad that you guys know it. It was skipping my mind. Um, but I want to be more like Zacchaeus, don't you? Like, I don't want to be simply content. We don't want to be simply content just to invite Jesus into our homes, right? Uh, of course, that's a great and beautiful thing, right? Like God, you know, Jesus went to his house and, and blessed him in that way, and it was amazing, and that was wonderful. But I think we need to be like Zacchaeus and not be content with just that, right? But, but instead, when we meet Jesus, uh, it, whether it be for the first time, whether it be uh, every time, right? I hope that we are like Zacchaeus and that we are so moved that it changes our hearts, that we are so moved by an encounter with Jesus each and every time, not just the first time, so moved that we become people of radical hope, so moved that we can see those that are unseen and, and that we can speak up for those whose voices can't be heard. And I think Zacchaeus is kind of like the perfect intersection in my mind of where heart change meets action, right? Like the perfect crossroad, crossroad, excuse me, of where um, spiritual and heart change can meet action. And, and uh, it actually reminds me of, I want to tell a quick story of mine where uh, I was at a vineyard worship leader retreat. I think it was maybe my second one. I can't remember, second or third. Either way, I, I, it wasn't my first one. Um, and we, there's a lot of worship and a lot of praying for one another, uh, ministry time. And there was a time in the night where, uh, you know, the band was leading us in worship and everyone was receiving prayer and it was really powerful. And, and I felt, uh, like standing and holding my hands out and, and trying to say, God, speak to me. What do you have for me, Lord? Uh, and, and I wanted someone to come and pray for me, right? Like I wanted someone to come and pray for me and to have a beautiful word that would move me. And of course, that would be wonderful, right? But instead, when I held my hands out, I heard God pretty clearly to me say, uh, you have everything that you need. Go and pray for other people. And I remember it kind of throwing me off a little bit and being like, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Um, and it was just this intersection for me of like, of like where heart change meets action. And like God was saying to me, like you have, not that you have everything, right? But, but you have the tools you need. There are people in this room that need prayer. Go pray for those people. And so I went around and I started to pray for some people that God was just highlighting to me. And it was the first time really that that had happened to me. Uh, it was a little gracelet, I think, uh, um, of prayer and, and ministry. And, and I got a chance to pray for people in a powerful way that night. And it was really wonderful. And that is actually the same exact night that I met Bob Palumbo. <laughs> as funny as that is. Um, but man, this is the kind of change that can only happen through Jesus, right? Like uh, the change, the word that I heard, the change that I experienced, but also more but like Zacchaeus and, and the, ch the change that happened in his heart, the change where he decided on a, on a whim to say, Lord, look, look, God, look, 
I'm giving all of this, I'm giving half of this to people who need it. And if there's anyone that I've ever wronged, I will pay them back four times the amount. I will serve them, I will love them. And man, uh, that's change I want, right? And not just one-off change, that's change I always want in my life. I think it's his heart that we so desperately want and desire, don't we? Uh, just to always be pushing towards the heart of Jesus. And I think Zacchaeus heard about this heart and, and even just hearing the, the stories about the, the, the heart of Jesus, he went out of his way and found a way to persevere and meet Jesus. And it changed his life radically, didn't it? And I just think, wow, we can be a people like Zacchaeus. We can be a people for the kingdom that not only is so changed and moved by the heart of Jesus, but is called to action. You know, it, we're called at a certain point by God to move. And, and I think that we all are going to have moments where we hear, you have enough, go do, go do this, you know, or maybe it's in a moment where you're unsure and you're nervous. You know, I don't think I can pray for that person. God, I, I, I'm nervous about praying for someone. I don't know what if I say the wrong thing. I don't know what to say. And God, you know, I've had this happen to me. <laughs> and like God just says like, it'll be okay. You have what you need. Like you have me, you have what you need. And it's just a wonderful reminder for a lot of us uh, that God is kind of always at our back, right? Uh, but also that Jesus' heart changes us and, and it calls us to action. And, and it's both formational for us and a call to being formational for others. It, it's just a wonderful crossroad that I think we live at. And I think the vineyard sits perfectly in it with, with the tension that we talk about in the kingdom. So I really hope that uh, we can be a people that strive for Jesus in a way that Zacchaeus does, right? In a tenacious way that Zacchaeus does. Um, I want to pray this morning, uh, especially for anyone that feels that. But I had a few words this morning as I was just praying and preparing for this, that as we pray, I'm just going to pray them. If, it, if it's for you, hold your hands out and just receive, and maybe God will speak to you. And if it's not, then just join me in prayer for anyone that might be feeling it in these things. So Holy Spirit, come right now, Lord. Jesus, I pray that you would push us, that you would move us to be more like Zacchaeus. In a way of, of problem solving, in a way of, of tenacious pursuit of your heart, Lord. God, I pray for those who, who feel like they need courage to speak up who feel like they need courage to, to see those that are unseen. Lord, give us eyes and give us the words and let us trust in you. Give us trust. Help us, Lord. It can be so easy to not trust. God, I ask for a revival of hope. A revival of hope in our hearts that, that is almost like a voice that we can't ignore. Jesus, I pray for a blessing on the day for everyone here. Go before us. Make the day yours, God. Give us opportunities to stand up for someone, to speak up for someone. Give us opportunities to trust you. Give us, give us courage and chances to correct things with anyone that we've wronged. Help us to say we're sorry, God. We love you and we trust you. Would you go before us today? Amen. Amen, everyone. Thank you so much. Um,
for joining. Really happy to always see you guys and spend the morning with you guys. My little Thursday ritual. <laughs> um, I hope you all have an awesome day. And we'll be thinking of you. We love you. If there's anything that you guys want, any of you wants prayer for, uh, of course, always reach out to any one of us. We'd love to pray for you. Um, but we will see you uh, tomorrow morning for the reflection as well. But then on Sunday for church with the live stream. So have a great day, everyone. Bye.